They were an average family living in a peaceful neighborhood in Texas. But in May of 2023, tragedy blindsided them without any warning whatsoever. And the suspect behind their deaths would be their very own son. Cesar Alalde was a quiet kid. Arguably strange, but certainly known to be kind and polite. So when neighbors learned that he was responsible for the deaths of his mother, father, brother, and sister, they were absolutely astounded. But that was not the only horrifying detail. Following a very tense standoff with officers, Caesar claimed it was in self-defense, and even worse, bizarrely claimed that his family were planning to eat him. So the question on everyone's mind is, why? Why did Caesar murder his family? What were the reasons behind his actions? And is there any sense to make of this horrific story? Welcome or welcome back to Coffeehouse Crime, folks. My name is Adrian, and today we're talking about the tragic and bizarre case of Cesar Alalde. And let me tell you, this story is terrible. Speaking of Texas, I may as well be there right now because the UK is absolutely roasting. And being here in this flannel, I think I'm gonna keep this video quite concise. By the way, I report on true crime, strange and chilling stories, and the best way that you can support me is by subscribing to the channel. So if you like darkly fascinating stories, then please hit subscribe now, it's free after all. Apart from the coffee, you're gonna have to pay for that one. I try to respond to all comments in the first hour of my videos going live, so if you wanna catch me for a question or just say hi, then please hit the bell notification too. Anyway, with all of that said, please grab yourself a coffee, pull up a seat and get ready for the deep dive. This is the case of Cesar Alalde. Howdy folks, and welcome back to Texas, home of the Cowboys, the Texas Longhorns, and old-fashioned Southern hospitality. Now, we've been here a few times before, so let's start this on a different path and focus on the dark side of Texas. Did you know that this state is home to the deadliest natural disaster in US history? Casting our minds back to the year 1900, the Galveston hurricane battered and tore apart Texas's coastline. The Category 4 storm produced winds of up to 145 miles per hour, sadly flattening entire townships in its destructive wake. Figures vary here, but it's estimated to have killed between 8,000 and 12,000 people, with a cost of around $104 billion in today's value. Texas is home to many deadly explosions too. In April of 2013, a storage and distribution facility owned by West Fertilizer Company exploded, resulting in the deaths of 15 people and injuring more than 200 others. Investigations concluded that the fire that caused the explosion had to be deliberately set. Though this is fiercely disputed, and no one has ever been convicted to this date. Another interesting disaster to note is one that happened just weeks before our story took place. In April of 2023, an explosion at the South Fork dairy farm killed approximately 18,000 cows in an instant, sadly wiping out more than 3% of Texas's dairy livestock. The explosion was caused by a machine known as the Honey Badger, which can be described as a vacuum that sucks out manure and water. Authorities believe it may have overheated, igniting internal gases such as methane, which is commonly produced in large volumes by cows. Despite this, today's case pulls us further north than any of these tragedies, to the small town of Nash found in Bowie County, Texas. With a population of just under 4,000 people, Nash is definitely what you'd consider to be a small town. It's located in the northeast of the state, close to the state its shared border with Arkansas. In fact, it's just outside of the city of Texarkana, a very curious city which, no surprise, is split in half between the two states of Texas and Arkansas. Technically speaking, I have no idea how that even logistically works out. I mean, look at Google Maps and it's even split the city into two. On the subject of confusion, there is something very strange going on to the west of Nash and I have no idea what it precisely is. Travel west down the road, and you'll find the Red River Army Depot down along I-30. Google Maps shows some of its rural areas as cemeteries, but after taking a closer look, there are rows and rows of vehicles and literally hundreds of hangars. Thinking more about it, this is probably quite standard, but personally speaking, I thought it was quite interesting. You never know what you may or may not find when browsing through Google Maps. In fact, it's extremely easy and kind of fun to be nosy. We've all done it before. Saying that, one thing that you will never appreciate is when other people are nosy towards you and your own personal information. Sadly, cybersecurity is a big issue these days, so much so that it's forever breaking new records on Google Trends. Having your login details stolen by someone else is actually much easier than you may think. When I say phishing, I'm not talking about your favorite pastime hobby. I'm talking about imposters mimicking websites that you may normally use to trick you into entering your login details. And before you know it, someone has locked you out of your 
your banking app with access to your funds and personal details. Which is why you should always consider using NordVPN, our sponsor for today's video. Thanks to its built-in threat protection, NordVPN protects you from malicious websites, downloads, trackers, and intrusive ads. And that's just one of many incredible features. With all of the browsing that I do online, it has protected me numerous times from both vulnerable and risky websites, keeping me and my information safe. And with thousands of servers worldwide, it has helped me access geo-restricted content like Netflix at the click of a button, allowing me to explore and enjoy the internet without borders. Take control of your internet experience today with NordVPN. Right now, you can get a two-year plan at a huge discount plus four additional months for free when you use my link, nordvpn.com slash coffeehousecrime. By the way, it's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash coffeehousecrime or use the link in the description below. Focusing back to our story today, one of those families living in the town of Nash, Texas was the Alalde family. Found within the Alalde home was a 46-year-old father named Ruben and his loving wife, Aida Garcia. Both were born and raised in Mexico, moving to America in their early adult years. Now, Ruben was a hard-working family man from Calderon, and Aida Garcia, who was from Nopalera, was described as a loving and caring lady. Living in the sleepy neighborhood of Lemon Acres, Ruben and Aida lived with three of their four children, Lisbeth, Caesar, and Oliver, with Lisbeth being 24 years old, Caesar 18, and Oliver 5. Found outside of the family home, their eldest daughter, Diana, had already flown the nest. Beginning with Lisbeth, she had recently graduated from Texas A&M University, Texacana, and in the coming years was hoping to become a teacher. Lisbeth had many things to look forward to, and had recently become engaged to a young man and fellow graduate named Jeremiah Reynolds. The young woman was known to be funny, compassionate, supportive, and full of life. Cesar Olalde, who happens to be the main subject in our case today, was the third child of Reuben and Aida, and Oliver, their fourth child, completed the house household as their youngest sibling. Born on January the 8th, 2005, Caesar attended Texas high school and was expected to graduate this very year, 2023. He had ambitions to start his own business as a plumber, and was looking to pursue his plans with an apprenticeship. Now, there is no better way to learn about someone than through their own self-written presentation. A few years prior, and while in seventh grade, Caesar had completed a project named This Is Me, where he talked about his hobbies, social media, and his life including family and education. So, let's use this to gain a better understanding of him. Caesar was born in the United States to his Mexican parents who grew up in different areas. He loved to play soccer and video games, noting that gaming in particular helped him escape reality whenever he felt stressed. To add to that, he also liked playing football because it gave him an adrenaline rush. While writing from Texas Middle School, Caesar spoke about working in the medical field as he got older. Things wouldn't quite work out this way, as we already know, and although he managed to attain relatively good grades, they would gradually slip over the coming years. Although there aren't many testimonies to publicly back this claim up, Caesar was known to be a rather strange kid at school. He didn't seem to have many friends, and to add to this, all of his selfies are taken from a mirror of a public bathroom. People in the area described him as a kind boy who is often seen helping his father in the garden, and although the family were known to be quite quiet, they were very courteous to their neighbours. The Alaldes were a perfect example of a laid-back family. They lived in a comfortable-sized home in rural Texas, and their values were placed where it really mattered family. But sadly, on May the 23rd, 2023, the family's situation turned from comfortable to dire and desperate in an instant. It started like any other day for the residents of Nash. It just so happened to be a Tuesday, with the weather being both sunny and pleasant. Lisbeth was scheduled to arrive for work at her local church that morning, but strangely, failed to appear for her shift. Her sudden disappearance was jarring to her colleagues. She had rarely missed work before, let alone without warning, and so, naturally, they thought this was unusual. As a result, multiple friends tried to contact Lisbeth through her mobile phone, but all of them were met with her voicemail. It was at this moment that a co-worker decided to travel to the family home and see what was causing the silence. With concern plaguing their minds, 35-year-old Joseph Flyder and his wife drove to the family house found on Lemon Acres. And coincidentally, at the same time, a distant member of the Alalde family arrived with similar worries. But after knocking on the front door, the group were met with a very eerie nothing. And with no sign of life detected from inside, they made the decision to force their way in. And once they did, what they found inside would haunt them forever. The group were met with Cesar Alalde armed and holding a gun. Immediately realizing that something was desperately wrong, Joseph told the others to step outside while he took matters into his own hands. And this is where the horrific extent of the situation became all too apparent. 
Joseph began to realize several morbid details within the home. Bullet casings were noticed on the floor, and smeared blood trails could be seen at various points around the house with all of them seeming to lead towards the family bathroom. Caesar was clearly agitated too, waving the firearm around in his hand and even pointing it towards Joseph, and the words coming out of his mouth were clear but entirely unbelievable, hastily describing how he took their lives and why he had to, and of course, tragically, the they he was referring to was his entire family. Caesar believed that his immediate family were cannibals, and furthermore, he seemed convinced that they were going to slaughter and eat him if he didn't kill them first. He never seemed to elaborate any further on why he believed this, only repeatedly stating that he had in fact killed them. Found in the bathroom were the bodies of Reuben, Aida, Lisbeth, and Oliver. All four had clearly been shot in different parts of the house before being dragged into the bathroom. No surprise, but by now, Joseph's wife had called the authorities. All available patrols were immediately dispatched to the crime scene. Meanwhile, Caesar was given another phone to speak to the operator, who, no doubt, was waiting with concern on the other the end of the line. A few minutes later, police arrived at the scene at 10.48am. Caesar began to shout at the officers, daring them to shoot him as he threatened to take his own life. In response, officers cordoned off the area while they requested a professional negotiator to the scene. A dramatic and tense standoff followed, with Caesar even threatening to shoot at the officers. Dozens of police surrounded the property, posed and ready for the concerning possibility of a shootout. But thankfully, after two hours of intense discussion, the young man finally gave himself up. He was therefore arrested immediately before being taken into custody, and with him now in handcuffs, investigators were left behind at the house to make sense of the grisly scene. And we're tracking a developing story out of Bowie County, Texas. Four family members were shot and killed this afternoon in Nash. Police say they got a 911 call about a man harming people inside a home. Several agencies, including a SWAT team, arrived on the scene to talk the man down. The suspect was eventually arrested after a two-hour standoff. They did an amazing job of getting this subject to walk outside and surrender peacefully, and we were able to take him into custody at that time. No names or ages of the victims have been released at this time. The suspect is being booked into the Bi-State Jail. Locals were absolutely stunned to hear the news. I mean, I know it's a cliche thing to say, but this sort of thing just didn't happen in a small town like Nash. None of this made any sense to any of the neighbors that knew the family either, and they were absolutely shocked to learn that Caesar was the killer. He was known to be a good kid without any problems. One neighbor described the Alaldes as a beautiful family who are hardworking and extremely nice, and Caesar very firmly fell into this category. Honestly, none of this made sense to any of them. Following the investigation, Reuben, Oliver, and Lisbeth were all confirmed to be shot once with a firearm, with Aida shot multiple times. And again, Caesar repeatedly claimed that his family were all cannibals, and that he had to kill them to save himself. Now, all of this begs multiple questions. The first one was, what was going on in Caesar's head? And why did he believe such things? With this case happening so recently, it will take some time for us to understand what was going on in his mind. As you know, psychological analysis of a murder suspect is usually a long, delicate, and vigilant process. Personally speaking though, there is little doubt in my mind that Caesar was suffering from delusions or other health conditions at the time of the crime. According to Dr. Lewis Schlesinger, a professor of psychology at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, it is an extremely rare occasion for a teenager to commit mass familicide. And while he does admit that Caesar's claims are difficult to believe, he does accept that Caesar may have genuinely believed it at the moment he murdered his family. He attributes this to the fact that this explanation or reason was not given to the police under interrogation or duress, but instead was volunteered immediately to Joseph upon entering the house. It would be classified as delusional ideation, where he truly believed that this was a real threat at the time. In order to make an official determination as to his mental state at the time of the crime, a mental health evaluation and a competency exam are likely to be requested in Caesar's case, though these are still yet to be completed at the day of this video being published. And although it would be easy to assume that this is an obvious case of criminal insanity, various psychologists reviewing this case are not so sure. Several factors do not work in Caesar's favour. 
her. The fact that he phoned the police himself and confessed his crimes to Joseph and the operator does show that he had at least some level of understanding of his actions as well as the fact that they were wrong. It's worth highlighting that in most US states, the standard rule for pleading not guilty by reason of legal insanity requires that the person, by reason of mental disease or defect, was incapable of either knowing the nature of his or her act, understanding the nature of his or her act, or distinguishing between right and wrong at the time of the commission of the crime. Now, Caesar both knew and understood the nature of his actions, so he would likely need to prove that he was incapable of distinguishing between right and wrong at the time. But threatening to take his own life or shoot officers does confirm that he had some degree of awareness that there was still a moral or legal implication to murdering his family. This signifies that, at least on some basic level, he knew that his behaviour was unacceptable. It is also noted that, despite having the weapon aimed at Joseph's head multiple times, Caesar never actually pulled the trigger. If he were totally unaware of the gravity of his actions and was incapable of exercising his morality, he likely would have followed through without much hesitation. I don't say this to downplay the terror that Joseph must have felt, but Caesar stopped taking any more lives only after murdering his family. Now, it is extremely important to bear in mind that a person with a mental health condition or a defect can still be found guilty. This is because insanity requires the inability to know, understand, or distinguish the crime. At least personally speaking, I think there may be a possibility that Caesar either has a mental health condition or an acute defect of the mind. But, saying that, he did appear to be aware of his actions. But as always, we will just have to wait and see what happens with his psychological evaluation and then his trial. Cesar Alalde is currently being held on a $10 million bond. He was booked in at the Bi-State Justice Center in Texarkana and is currently being held at Bowie County Jail while he awaits his trial. Public defender Jeff Harrelson has been allocated to his case, and it is quite clear that he's up against an overwhelming amount of physical evidence. Now, there are several more steps to go until we know what exactly Caesar's sentence will be. He must first be deemed competent to stand trial, which is determined after a full psychological evaluation. If the answer is yes, then there is actually a possibility that he will receive the death sentence. Of course, thanks to this happening in the state of Texas. Sadly, even the most unspeakable of crimes committed by Caesar is common enough to have a catch-all term for it, that of course being family annihilation. This doesn't intend to brandish his actions to be any less horrifying though, it just serves to demonstrate that they disturbingly aren't unheard of. What is very unique though is the motivation that he gave for his crime. Deciding to murder your entire family in cold blood because you apparently believe they're going to eat you is not a normal or usual thing to do. Caesar's young age is also something a little unusual in this story, and although there historically have been younger murderers, it is horrifying to imagine that someone so young is capable of committing such acts of brutality on their very own family. Joseph's actions are also very unique, because after arriving at the property with his wife and then forcing entry, he was met with a very angry teenager with a firearm. Now, there is no manual or guidebook on Earth that can help anyone in this sort of scenario, but Joseph thought very quickly and calmly and asked his wife to leave so he could face the problem alone. Even after being threatened with the firearm multiple times and learning that his friend had been murdered, he still tried to equip Caesar with the best odds possible. And although we don't know the entire story yet, it is confirmed that, without a doubt, Joseph definitely knew that Caesar killed his entire family. And still, he stayed. Now, these actions can sometimes be seen as reckless, but I prefer to see this as heroic, because Joseph stayed for someone who desperately needed help. I mean, let's be honest here, he's got bigger balls than most of the cowards I have to cover on this channel, that's for sure. Sadly though, nothing can be done to bring back the four innocent victims of our case. Reuben, Ida, Lisbeth, and Oliver all unexpectedly met their end, and they were betrayed by a loved one in the worst possible of ways. And even after all of their deaths, they were unceremoniously dragged into the bathroom. Reuben was a family man and was well known in the local area to centre his life around his family, and Ada Garcia Mendoza was right by his side. It's very clear to see that the couple loved their children with all of their hearts. Oliver Oliver was only five years old when he lost his life, and there is so much yet so little to say about it. He was yet to grow into his own person, and even to begin to fully understand the world around him. It is a tremendously painful loss to die so young. Lisbeth was 24 years old when she lost her life at the hands of her brother. With a public Facebook profile, she is the most visible of her family, and it's clear through her many images and posts that she was an extremely kind and caring person. As a young woman engaged in a loving relationship, she was mercilessly ripped away from a man who wanted to commit his life to her. And I can't even begin 
begin to comprehend the pain that he has had to endure since her death. Peering back at her last post on Facebook, she simply said, Always a fun time with you, my love. In the aftermath of their deaths, the family's only remaining innocent sibling, Diana Alalde, initiated a fundraising campaign to help with their funeral costs. In the campaign, she described her father, Reuben, as a hard-working man and her mother as caring and loving. Her sister, Lisbeth, was described as someone who was full of life, happiness, and dreams. And her younger brother, Oliver, was amazing, funny, and cheerful. The local community of Nash and many further afar banded together to help raise more than $60,000 for the Alalde family. And in their obituary, and online memorial pages. High volumes of comments and photos are shared by many of those who knew them. Many people have felt compelled to share their respects, and dozens more recall memories from happier times. Happier times like hanging out, playing together, and going to the movies. Dancing in front of the television, eating and singing together on late summer nights, and innocently goofing around as a happy family. Knowing that they are now forever gone, it is heartbreaking to see so much love, energy, and life between a clearly inseparable family. Quite simply, there is no justification for the senseless deaths. Perhaps it isn't even worth trying to apply logic to a story that was caused without any. Maybe in the face of horror and senseless death, and when we're confronted with a subject such as Caesar Alalde, try to remember the good times and honour those lost. I do really hope that the remaining family and friends of the Alaldes find the closure that they deserve. As always folks, I'll be sure to let you know of any advancements to Caesar's case, because I think we're all currently thinking one single worded question. Why? For now though, I'm gonna wrap this case up here, so thank you for watching. Before you go though, what are your thoughts on this case? Do you think that Caesar really did go insane, or do you think there's an ulterior motive? Whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested, you can find the link in the description below. If you found this case interesting or insightful, then please remember to like the video, and if you haven't yet, then please consider subscribing, or else I'll put salt in your coffee. If you'd like to know more about me, Nero, or just more true crime, then please head on over to these profiles. And yeah, that's the end of the video. Thank you again so much for watching, folks, and as always, I'll see you again very soon for another one. Until that moment arrives though, remember to look after yourself, look after each other, and of course, stay safe. Thank you, and goodbye.